I wrote this poem, uh, uh, it's called B version, or B the version. It is based on the Quran con concept of Al Hur Al Ain. Al Hur Al Ain is a companion of beautiful, lustrous eyes. But when you look at the linguistic use usage of the words Hur, it comes from the root verb. Hawar to transform. So Huri means transformed, one of the meaning. It could also mean with lustrous eyes, but one of the possible meaning is the transformed. And uh, al ain can mean an eye, but it also means the essence. It means also fountain or spring. So it has many meanings. So it can be the transformed essences, in my view. So as I said in uh, my commentary about the word virgin in Ibn Arabi poem, that we can become the virgin. And this is in, in harmony with what Prophet Muhammad والسلام, said when one of the old ladies once came to him, an old woman, and she said to him, can you pray for me? to enter the garden or to be in, in paradise. So he said to her, but uh, the, no, uh, the elders do not enter paradise. So the woman like screamed and uh, so he, it turned out that he was just joking. He was having a sense of humor with her. And then he recited the ayah that says that Allah will re-originate, re-originate or recreate the women to be virgins. This is an ayah in the Quran. So that made me think if if transformed essence and if the women will become the virgins in the in the garden, then it me and as the Sufi uh, says, be the daughter or the son of the moment. So we can be the mates in the garden right here and now. We don't have to think of something later. We we can enter the garden here and now. That is the Sufi uh, perspective or the Sufi pursuit goal is to experience the garden here and now and to become the virgins now and here, to become whether a man or a woman, we become the virgin, meaning to become virgin to the moment or virgin in this very moment to be open to a new experience. Every moment is bringing a new experience from the beloved Allah. So every moment is bringing that and you are impressed. Your beloved is closer to you than your jugular vein. So if we are in that spirit, living with that spirit, we become like the virgin, like uh, that is excited for the women, for the moment, awaiting the beloved, dreaming of the beloved of that uh, union so we become the virgin so i wrote it with that in inspirations and that understanding in mind so the concept of uh, the virgin in the quran or in the sufi poetry it is similar to the concept of wine uh, it is all the metaphors but it is based on the form also, because the form is a metaphor. So when the Sufi, again, contemplate the divine through his ayat, through the woman, for example, if a man is contemplating that through the, or if even the woman is contemplating it through, the, through her own form, that becomes like sacred. Everything in the human body becomes a metaphor, just as everything in the universe is a metaphor for something holy, for something beautiful. And so it is, uh, it is not like uh, a sexuality that is coming of lust, but it is rather a very pure type of love that is based on considering everything holy. Everything is a metaphor of the holy essence and treating it as such. Alhamdulillah, that was 
very helpful. Alhamdulillah. You know, um, one of the things that, uh, you know, with the, the um, uh, terrorism and suicide bombing, that some people say, oh, well, they, you know, that they're not afraid to die because they, the Quran promises virgins in heaven, you know, after they die. Mm -hmm. And um, that, like you say, some people don't understand and would, you know, think of, of Ibn al-Arabi as, um, you know, erotic poetry or whatever. And it just kind of sounds like people take that in the same way. And um, I'm just wondering, because I would love to be able to respond in a way that helps people to see the, the beauty and the truth of what this is about in the Quran. Yes. And it's like your, both of these poems help to illuminate that. And I'm just wondering if there's anything that you can say that specifically ties it to that question about the Quran. Well, first of all, in the Bible, too, if you read the Song of Solomon, uh, there is uh, some erotic, very, you know, like Ibn Arabi <laughs> poetry or Ibn al-Farid poetry that is erotic like that. And uh, so it exists in the Bible, too, uh, if you read the Song of Solomon. So it is not peculiar to the Quran. Hinduism has things like that, too. So it seems like every religion has something about that seems to be erotic, but it is not, again, the literal understanding, the lustful understanding that people get from. It, 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 it actually speaks of sexuality as a holy thing, and this... Uh, it is not in a lustful way, degrading way. It speaks about it that as a metaphor, a metaphor of something holy and something beautiful and something to be respected. So it is not promoting something to uh, use women or to, you know what I mean? Yes. But actually That's respect helpful. women, to respect right. sexuality, to respect women. So uh, it is speaking of it as something holy and a metaphor of God. So it exists in many other religions. So that would be my reply to people who exclude the Quran. Then my second reply is that, as in every religion, there are people who take things literally and people who understand some of the metaphors people are in different level of understanding and interpretations and everyone takes what their level of intellectuality and spirituality allows them to take so the quran or uh, the bible also it speaks to different levels of people so you can speak to a child in a way that he might understand things literally or to uh, have the reward and punishment by saying I will give you this candy or this gift uh, you know or this toy if you behave but for an adult who, who matured spiritually and intellectually he uh, he will do the sacred or holy thing and enjoy that without the external material reward, the lustful thing. So that is a difference. Then I would also refer to how uh, Muslims themselves, some of them, mis uh, you know, understand it in a way that it is a candy or toy, like in a very materialistic term, almost like lustful term, while others. Uh, un, like Ibn Arabis and the Sufis understand it in, in a holy way. So this would be my answers to, to them. And uh, of course, uh, it is like, 
how could you hurt an innocent child and kill something, so, someone like innocent and the child and expect to have these materialistic things and think that God is like that, like it doesn't make sense, but uh, uh, this is a misunderstanding by some people who use religion for political gains and move the masses who are not mature spiritually, intellectually, economically, and use that to motivate them to, for their own political goals. So, but the Quran does not say, go kill innocent and then you will have women. <laughs> the Quran does not say it in that way at all. So I hope these points can be helpful. <laughs>